So in this video, we're going to have a look at ECG placement. Now, firstly, what does ECG stand for? It stands for electrocardiogram or electrocardiograph. And it's a way of measuring the electrical activity of the heart. Remember that the heart's a pump. It's a muscular pump that when it contracts, it will push blood either from the atria to the ventricles or from the ventricles out of the respective arteries. Now, before it can contract, electrical signals need to be sent down through this muscle tissue. And ECGs measure the direction that these waves move, okay? Now, what we're gonna look at today, or very quickly in this video, is what we call a 12 lead ECG, okay? Now, please be aware that leads are different to electrodes. The electrodes are the sticky dots that you place on the patient. The leads are basically the set of eyes on the heart, having a look at what's going on, giving you the ECG readout, okay? So in a 12 lead ECG, we have 12 views of the heart, but in actual fact, we only, only use 10 electrodes to get these 12 views, okay? So what I'm going to do now is just show you exactly where these 10 electrodes go. And then in the next video, I'm gonna have a look at how these electrodes view the heart differently. So, of the 10 electrodes, you are gonna find that four of them go on your limbs. One on the left hand, one on the right hand, one on the left leg, one on the left leg, uh, right leg. They're four electrodes. The other six of the 10 electrodes go on the chest, and they're called the precordial electrodes. And they are also the electrodes that give you the precordial leads or precordial readouts. So, First thing I want to do is draw up the chest. So what we're going to do is first of all draw the sternum. Just very simply. We're going to draw the sternum, we're going to draw the clavicle. We're going to draw some ribs, maybe six or so ribs. One, two, three, four. Five, six. Okay. Now, when we place these what we call precordial electrodes, we have six. We start with the first one, and we call the first one V1. Now, where does V1 go? Remember, please remember that when you're looking at the patient, that's the right side, that's the left hand side, and you know that the heart sits. Behind the sternum, a little bit to the left, turned a little bit so the apex or the point of the heart is pointing towards the left hip. So you need to keep that in mind because that's important when it comes to the placement of these leads, of uh, these electrodes. Okay, V1, first electrode, we place from the sternum, go to the right of that sternum, and then count your ribs. Go to your fourth rib. And after that fourth rib is your fourth intercostal space. So that's one, two, three, four. So to the right of your sternum at the fourth intercostal space, one, two, three, four, we place the first electrode, V1. Now, V2 is very easy because it goes, again, at the fourth intercostal space, but on the left-hand side of the sternum. So that's where V2 sits. Now usually you'll skip V3, and I'll show you why in a second, and move to V4. To find where V4 goes, you find the clavicle, and go mid-clavicular, and you'll move down to the fifth intercostal space, okay? And that fifth intercostal space, if you feel, should be able to feel your heartbeat. What you're actually feeling is the apex of your heart hitting the precardium, okay? That's the fifth intercostal space. And that's where you put V4. So mid-clavicular, fifth intercostal space, V4. V3 simply goes immediately between V2 and V4. And V5 and V6 very easily go at the fifth intercostal space but move towards the axillary. The axillary is the underarm, okay? So that means we will also put V5 and V6, okay, they are the precordial electrodes giving you the precordial leads, the electrodes you place on the chest of your patient. Now, what about the other four? Because I said there's 10 electrodes. Well, if we were to draw up just the stick figure of an individual, you 
you will place one lead, or one electrode I should say, left arm, right arm, left leg, and right leg. Now, you can see I drew three the same colour and one a different colour. Now, the three of the same colour, right arm, left arm, left leg, that's important because what you can see is the right leg which I drew in red actually does not contribute to the ECG in regards to its view of the heart. It's not a lead. It does not give us a view of the heart. It is a ground for the machine. Okay, sort of gets rid of some of that background. So what you can see is one, two, three electrodes right arm, left arm, left leg, they contribute to the views of the heart, okay? Now, this is where they're placed. Now, you need to remember that placing them here, so if I were to draw the trunk of this individual, okay? So I'm drawing the trunk of the individual, that placing a lead on a patient's arm is basically the same as placing it at the trunk where that limb connects, okay? So whether it's here or here, or here. Now the reason why this is important is because remember we have the heart placed in here roughly and what we have is the left arm lead is going to have its own little view of the heart, the right arm lead is going to have its own little view of the heart, the left leg lead is going to have its own little view of the heart. But in addition to that what you'll find is that unlike the electrodes on the chest these electrodes can speak to each other, okay? They're called bipolar leads. These are called unipolar leads. Now, that means that the right arm can speak to the left arm. The right arm can speak to the left leg or left foot. And the left arm can speak to the left foot, okay? So, right arm speaks to left arm, right arm speaks to left leg, and left arm speaks to left leg. The reason why this is important is because when they talk to each other, they also measure what's going on in regards to the electrical activity of the heart in that particular direction. Okay. So in addition to having a view of the heart, view of the heart, view of the heart from these electrodes, we also have a view of the heart basically from this direction because of this one coming across we call that limb lead one we have a view of the heart from this direction we call that limb lead two and we have one from this direction so this one's going across like this we call that limb lead three. We don't call this lead, because it's a view of the heart, it's a lead now, not an electrode, we don't call this lead right arm, we call it AVR, which stands for augmented vector right arm. Don't stress out about that too much. We don't call this one left arm, we call it augmented vector left arm. And we don't call this left leg, we call it AVF, which is augmented vector foot. So that looks a little bit messy. If I were to just draw this up just here, just a little bit larger, it means that we now have a view of the heart, if I get rid of this very quickly. We have a view of the heart from there, from there, from there, so it's going to be AVL, AVR, this is going to be AVF. We also have a view of the heart from here, which is limb lead one, a view of the heart from here, which is limb lead two, and a view of the heart from here, which is limb lead three. How many views of the heart is that? That's one, two, three, four, five, six views of the heart from four electrodes. 
So four electrodes on the limbs give you six views of the heart, plus the six views of the heart you get from the precord will give you 12 leads. That's your 12 lead ECG. Please remember, these leads on the chest, they're placed on the chest like this. So they're viewing the heart from that direction. These limb leads are viewing the heart from this direction. So what do we have? We've got a view of the heart from here and a view of the heart from here. We now have a 3D view of what's going on electrically in the heart. Okay. In the next video, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit more detail.